Folks, we've got a beautiful day. The weather's not only beautiful, but we've got some beautiful things to talk about. These, these bridges that you've got, these 26, 27 bridges that uh, have been in disrepair forever. They didn't get in disrepair under this governor's watch. They've been there. But it was this governor's vision that's going to get them repaired. It's this governor's foresight to look down the road and see that this needed to be done, it needed to be done now, and where are we going to get the money, and he figured it out. It's, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce my friend, the governor of West Virginia, Jim Justice. Woo! I thought you were going to introduce Jimmy first. Okay, for those of you who don't know who just spoke, that's our Secretary of Transportation, that's Bird White. And Jimmy Riston's right here. And one of our great senators is right there and everything. Governor, and, uh, and so, let me just say this. This is a little complicated from the standpoint of, you know, we went through a bid process and the bids came in way, way, way over what we anticipated the bids to come in on, on day one. And I think they came in, if I remember correctly, at $275 million. And we really thought that they should come in at 190 is it about, in about the 190 range, I think. So we're kind of blown away. And then, and then immediately, the press says, well, they have underestimated all throughout all of these bids, and therefore the roads to prosperity promises of all the things that we promised we were going to be able to do, we're not going to be able to do it. So we went back to the drawing board. Jimmy Riston, who is our deputy, of, of, uh, deputy secretary of transportation, and our highways commissioner, along with Bird and along with many other good people, went back to the drawing board. We didn't accept that $275 million bid, and we went back to the drawing board and we tweaked and we worked at it as diligently as we possibly could, as we have on other bids. Now, since that time, some other bids have come in, and, and some of them have come in right on target. Some of them have come in a little bit to our favor and some of them a little bit not so uh, to our favor. Now we have a new bid and we had, how many people bid with her? Five. Five people bid on this project of 27 bridges. There's probably people right in this area that probably thought, well, seeing as how the bid came in so high and they rejected the bid, our bridges are never gonna be fixed. And we absolutely knew everything to the contrary of that, but it was still the scuttlebutt for the moment. Today, we're awarding the bid on all 27 bridges, a rehabilitation on 20, I'm sorry, on 26 bridges, Bird, you were correct. There's 25 bridges that are gonna be rehabilitated there's one bridge that's going to be completely rebuilt, the Fulton Bridge. And so today we're awarding that bid. We had real competitive bids that came in this go round. And this go round, the, the, the final bid that we're awarding was $214 million. Now we saved us in this state $61 million. And the other thing that's really neat about this is now, We've gone through, with the help of these great people, over and over and over, all the projects that we, that we promised, that were promoted, that were on the website, and every single project we can now say without any question whatsoever, they're all gonna be done. And so, so I, I couldn't be happier and uh, we're pouring money into our secondary roads and we're trying to do anything and everything we can to get them up to speed and we're buying equipment, you know, so our people, our great highway people will be able to do the jobs. And, uh, and so at the end of the day, there's no way in the world I can be happier. 
our state's moving. There's still lots and lots to do. There's still lots and lots of people to help. But at the same time, when you get announced first, first, first in everything in West Virginia of all places, you got to be dead gum proud. And so nobody's going to take that away from me. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to the successful bidder if if Mr. Swank could come here uh, and and I, I and Andrew. Okay, this is Andrew Swank, and they were the the uh, the winning bidder at two hundred and fourteen million dollars, and it's Swank Construction Company, and they're going to do us a great job. And he just told me he thanked me, but he said he's going to do great, and uh, and I know he will. And Ryan, please come. You come if you're with us too. This is our great senator. Of course, everybody here knows knows this young man, and, and so so. Uh, uh, nevertheless, I again thank you and. And I guess, unless, unless Jimmy wants to tell us maybe an update on the suspension bridge, we're working on that. We're looking to see, you know, where we can find some monies and everything. But Jimmy, you can maybe give us a better update on that. Uh, yes, I can. Uh, we, we actually have the uh, rehabilitation project underway and have had for some time. Of course, you, you know better than I do. This is a historic landmark in the background back here. It takes a little time to get through permissions with the resource agencies to be able to work on this bridge. We, uh, we had an incident up here a little while back and uh, the bridge suffered a little damage, uh, had, had some traffic on it that wasn't supposed to be there. So we're, uh, we, we rushed out and uh, did an inspection. We've got that inspection report back. Uh, we've, we've evaluated it. Now we're, uh, we've scheduled meetings with those resource agencies so that they can let us know what we can and can't do to prevent any more damage to the bridge while we're uh, completing the process to get through the uh, CHIPO and environmental process to get our project going. We have the plans probably about 90% done for the, for the major rehab project and we think that'll probably be around 2021, uh, maybe a little sooner uh, depending, on, uh, depending on what the resource agencies tell us. So that, that's where we are there. Again, I, I can't I can't say this enough times. We're on it. And our people are on it. And we're making incredible progress in highways and everything and things that have have not been seen forever and a day. Our roads, our bridges got in this shape over decades of neglect. Decades of being fiftieth. In all honesty, that's the problem. When you don't have any money, you can't fix anything. We were decades of dead last 50th, and feeding our people just garbage. That's all there is to it. You see, I'll promise you this, you got a lot of people that are really working now, and you got great people in the legislature that are working, but you got a governor that's dead after it. And I don't want anything. I'm not a politician. I'm not seeking the next office or anything. I don't want anything. I absolutely just want one thing. I want your love. And I want to get something done. And so that's what I do. And that's what I'm after every time. And so in this situation, as soon as we get this thing going, we want to move on and get something else going. We don't want to sit and, and uh, lean on our laurels. I will tell you this, you know, uh, I, I, you know, you heard that wonderful goose just honk. And, uh, and let me tell you this, you see, I really believe that the good Lord is in our lives all the time. Amen. All the time. Everything in our lives. Now let me just tell you something that is just as true as it can be. First of all, my dad died in June of 1993. You know, and and right and I was running our farm business and I was running the land business and the timber business and nothing to do whatsoever with the coal business and dad was running the coal business. And boom, he died. Well in nineteen seventy or seventy one, the Ohio River Barge Company, which was owned by Eastern Gas and Fuel, dedicated a boat in my dad's honor. They built a boat. We went to New Orleans. I said the prayer for the boat. My mom broke the bottle of champagne and off the boat went. I saw the boat one other time in my life. And in 1994, in January 1994, wheeling Pittsburgh steel, I didn't know what to do when my dad died with the coal business at all and we were in really tough shape. And wheeling Pitt decided today we're going to buy some coal from us 
And it was so important, it was unbelievable. I had only seen the boat one time in my life, and I flew into the Wheeling Airport, you know, in a charter plane, because I had to get there that day. My little sport coat on, I was skinny, believe it or not, at the time, and the wind would just cut you in two, and the snow blowing sideways like crazy. Well, I scooted to a, a halt, I got out on a tarmac, I got in a cab, and down the hill I went, and we got to the bottom of the hill, we turned left, and when we turned left, right out in the river, it looked as close to me as these cameras was my dad's boat. Now we got to business and we took off and everything. But the other thing that I was telling you about the, the wonderful goose was not long after that, I was on just floating down the James River. And again, I believe that the good Lord is here and you know, the definition of coincidence is an everyday occurrence in which the good Lord just chooses to remain anonymous. That's how I see it. We are blessed so much in every day. We are blessed today to be able to have the money. That's probably him tooting a horn, you know. But we're, you know, to have the money to be able to do this wonderful bridge for, bridges project. But now think about this. I'm floating down the river. This happened probably... I don't know, two months after my dad died, and I was floating down the river bass fishing, and all of a sudden, a goose, of all things, came right up to the boat, and it wouldn't leave. It swam right up to our boat. Somebody probably maybe had been feeding it, but it just kept going around and around and around the boat. Finally, I got in our car to leave after we go, and it just flew around and around and around my vehicle. And you may think I'm making that up, I'm not making it up. And so when I just said, you know, I'm all about just getting something done, that's what my dad would have taught me to do. And in some way, somehow, that goose honked at us. And so I appreciate the goose honking, even if it wasn't on key, you know, but, uh, but I, I mean it when I tell you that I love you and uh, I'm really proud of all the things that we're doing and proud of these great people that are going to work on this and in the back. And I love your hard hats and I love your hard work that you put in every day. I can't thank all these people enough. You have an incredible senator from this area. You know, you just have all kinds of good stuff going on here. It's a wonderful, beautiful town. And uh, all I can say is God bless and thank you so much for having me.